Hello, my name is Jonathan Steele and welcome to you to my show. Could you be more specific coming to you through by this way as the Stay Woke podcast? And on this episode of Could You Be More Specific, I'm going to talk about love and partnerships. And then what recent news, what happened with, you know, the wedding that was most talked about this past week. I kind of want to touch on the aspects of how do people balance personal goals in terms of how they want to succeed with their family and professional goals is how they want to achieve as business professionals. And what I want to use as an example is oftentimes, especially with men, men are able to uh, handle being in a partnership with someone, but they're still viewed as individuals. So for example, no one ever asked LeBron James, how does he handle being a husband and father? Because with his career, because he'll always still be viewed as himself as an individual first. Him being a husband and father, those are just things that add more layers to him as a person. For, say, someone like Serena Williams, she'll still get viewed through that old school lens of, well, now she's a wife and she's a mother, how she's going to handle having a professional career. And I think that's a detriment overall to how we're going to continue to grow as a society with the way we view each other if the main thing every time something happens in the personal life of a woman in terms of family, she's then that's held against her in terms of how she's going to move throughout her career. And the reason why I also kind of use the wedding that, you know, the royal wedding, as they call it, as an example is because everything with that goes along with what she has to give up in order to be a part of this marriage, which is just you never hear that with guys, you know, short of a guy marrying into a family that is, you know, wealthy. You don't really hear that. Like what maybe the guy who, um, uh, what's his name, Jeremy Meeks, who, uh, you know, got famous for his photo, you know, from jail, and now he's with this billionaire heiress, and now he's expecting a kid. But even with him, he's still viewed as himself throughout this whole process. It doesn't even matter that the girl he's with is a billionaire. It's just like, oh, well, you know, he's he's with a billionaire, and she's going to have his baby, and he has all these things now starting to pop up now, you know, post that incident, and he's doing fine. But I think that's very fascinating to talk about moving forward because you know ultimately even with amongst women they kind of had this debate about how do they go on having professional careers but still being mothers and still being wives at the same time and my my opinion on that moving forward is until we kind of can get past the idea that a woman who already multitasks enough in itself I, I don't know why this is still a a main issue that still goes on today that like well how do women handle motherhood and being wise because if you look at the job force whenever unemployment hits it's mostly towards men because men work jobs that usually go through high volatility in terms of the needs of it especially from the physical aspects of whether it's construction in terms of say for construction for an example if you look at a lot of the jobs that women take on they're jobs that they don't go away so a construction worker a lot of times isn't as much of a necessity as say a nurse, even though those are not uh, gender exclusive. Obviously, they've had both, you know, male and females be a construction worker and nurses. It's just, for example, that's an example of those are more steady and those are things that are more uh, reliable in terms of that. But um, in regards to, you know, moving forward in terms of how we are with each other in terms of from a relationship standpoint, especially in regards to men, I, I don't think that that gets brought up enough on, you know, the reason why a lot of times relationships don't work out is because, and I've talked about this before on some other um, uh, pods before too, is that if, if you're going to be the guy and the guy is viewed as someone that is at the head of the table and he's viewed as all these things and you're in a leadership position, then this is going to be really a tough thing for you to take on, but you got to accept the brunt of it when it's going bad and you're going to get the line share of the credit when it's going good for women women don't really get that same luxury a lot of the times when something bad happens with women the first thing is always well what does she do that's the first thing that gets brought up and that's another thing that bothers me when we get into other debates too instead of just waiting and see like if you hear something that happens publicly or if you hear something that happens um, from a, a personal standpoint with friends no one ever just waits to hear things all the way through and let things come as they are, you have to make an immediate assessment on it. And that's something that kind of 
I wouldn't say necessarily bothers me, but it's just something like because you already know that's coming, you, you kind of don't get as upset as you would beforehand. But uh, as a guy, yeah, I've noticed that like no one, no one's gonna bring up to me, you know, well how old am I? I tell them my age, and then no one's going. It's not a pressure that I have to get married right now. It's not a pressure that I have to have kids. But if a woman my age is that in the same boat, then someone says, well, what's wrong with her? And I've never understood why that, why that is, why we put these clocks on women where it seems like men, we just, we have a, an infinite amount of time a lot of the time to do what we want. And even if it gets mentioned that you're a much older man who's single and you don't have kids, it doesn't stick to you the way it sticks to women. So that's just some of my thoughts in regards to that. I know, uh, you know, kind of leaning more so into the to the wedding aspect of uh, of last weekend it, it, it is kind of disturbing that we're so obsessed with the show that that's another thing for me I think I think the the royal wedding is an example of why I think it, it's it, it highlights why I think we struggle a lot of the times because you know we get so caught up in the day when the grind is going to be throughout our lives and and I don't even know if most couples even talk about, like, how, how am I going to be towards you when uh, we're in year 15 or year 20 or year 25? I think we kind of cavalier say, like, oh, we're going to be together forever or, you know, I'm going to be with you for the rest of my life. And, and obviously most marriages may last, what, sometimes a couple years. I know it's kind of changed for the most part. I saw another statistic where it said uh, that, you know, I think what, we're at like 50 about what 52 percent some say and some say that could be more based off the fact that you know some people just can't afford to get a divorce which is another thing that from a legal standpoint needs to be worked at you shouldn't go broke to get divorced but i get it you know that's how lawyers end up making their money and they really work together to keep you guys from not getting divorced so they can keep billing you but that's probably another topic for another day yeah, I, I just think with that wedding, it just, I think that's probably why I was so turned off from the coverage of that and just the, the lead up point of that. Because Meghan Markle beforehand, she's a successful working actor. It's not like she just, you know, came out of nowhere and this is all she's going to become known for. But for the majority of the people that are going to watch that coverage and watch that wedding, that's how it's going to be marketed. This is all there was to her. And it does kind of perpetuate a lot of the same kind of old classic kind of like sexist standards that you know that's really all women can do is get married to a well-off guy and her life is going to be fine and she's just going to be a mom and a wife and that's it and i guess that's probably why i was so turned off from one just in any any news coverage on it or any story being told about it because it's like i already knew that that's the angle that they were coming with it from it's not it's they're not going to be viewed as uh as Jay-Z and Beyonce, because these are two incredibly successful professionals who have now have a personal connection with each other and now they have a family. No one's going to ask, to be fair, no one's going to ask Beyonce the same type of questions that they were going to ask Meghan Markle. And granted, they're two different people and two different standards in terms of where their careers are at, but that's not going to be led with first. You know, I think Beyonce is probably one of the only handful of women I think I've ever seen where they kind of lean into her career and what she means to the world more so than they do as her being a wife and a mom, which I guess that's a good thing in a way that people can kind of separate that. But if she's really the only main example that you can use a lot of the times for that, it still says that we have a long way to go in terms of how we're going to look at relationships moving forward, especially for women, because women are working more than men. And that's a statistic that doesn't get brought up a lot. And if we're going to be in marriages and partnerships and we kind of want to emphasize us being more so in teams, a lot more women are carrying more of the weight in terms of financial of how these relationships are going than men are. And the numbers show that in the job market, especially. I have to look at the, the recent jobs report that they were talking about now, but overwhelmingly women are, are working more now. That number is kind of skewed a bit because we always have to look at equal pay. And, and how much women, and how much money are women making in regards to per hour in relationship in relation to uh, the dollar amount versus men? But if you're talking about just an overall employment, women are getting more employed than men are because 
women are more skilled. And, and that's something that doesn't get brought up enough. But the perception is a lot of times that more so men are carrying the brunt of the weight a lot of the time. And, and I'll say this as a guy. If, if a guy doesn't want a woman to emasculate him, then he doesn't need to then decide to want to flex his, you know, his chest a bit about what he does for her. You're going to be paying bills at your home whether you're in a relationship or not. That stuff should not be the main focus of why you guys are together or why you guys are going to be able to work out and move forward. If your argument as a guy is that, hey, I pay bills, that's something you have to do regardless whether or not you're in a relationship with someone. And that's why I think most of them don't work. And, that, and that, that's not a gender specific thing, but that's just an example. Just speaking from a guy, from my, 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 my point of view, is that it happens a lot. Is that, you know, both men and women, the reason why a lot of their relationships don't work is because we have a me first attitude when we enter it. And and men are guilty of it a lot and women are guilty of it a lot. And it's the same thing, no matter what type of relationship you're in, whether, you know, you're in a same sex relationship or not. It, we all face the same hurdles because we're human beings. So and we are going to have different interpretations of how we view how things are supposed to go, because you got to look at we've been pre-programmed from the time we were kids about how we're supposed to view a lot of things. So you got to work at these habits. And I think that's something that um, moving forward, we'll have a, a chance to kind of correct as we move along. But just in regards to the to this wedding, I think that's probably why I was just so, so not bothered, but just disinterested in it because I knew that's what it was all about was what she was going to be wearing and all her responsibilities and being a duchess and and I had a comment on Saturday about when it was, you know, been promoted like it's black girl magic that she's marrying this guy. And I was just like, this is black girl magic. You know, I was like, really? When I saw that and I and I and I made a comment on Instagram about that, about how, you know, black women for a long time have have been walking around with crowns. They've never needed a, a distinction to acknowledge that they've never been called a duchess because speaking as a black man, we've always known the weight. And how important black women have always been in our family. No matter what the national media says about black women, no matter how oftentimes black women can get be belittled, made fun of, and dismissed a lot of times whenever they make a comment or make their concerns felt on any issue. We all know that as black men, even the black men that, that do complain about it, they know for a fact, whether it's their auntie, their grandmother, their mother, any woman that they probably have had in their family, they know what she's meant. To them personally and to their friends or to the other family members around them so that's something that you know i think from saturday that kind of kind of bothered me but if you look at say something like just the other day hearing about stacy abrams being the first black woman to get the uh governor nomination for the democratic party that's black girl magic winning a, a, a nomination in a state that has historically been one of the leaders of jim crow and just if you look at the racial history overall with the state of Georgia, what she did the other night cannot be emphasized enough that here we're going to have a black woman running to hold major office. I mean, like, there's no way you could have seen something like that coming. So so what Stacey Abrams accomplished, I think, was groundbreaking in itself. And, and I think that's probably like a good thread to go from from a woman being viewed as her main accomplishment was she's marrying to a, a, a wealthy family in another country, leaning all the way to a woman who is running for a high office seat in in a state with so much history in, in the United States of America, and she has a chance to make a real difference. So I guess that that's to me was probably one of the best stories I had a chance to, to see from a new standpoint. And obviously, you know, publicly, we don't have that, but a lot of the time, but those are just some of my thoughts that I had on 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 this issue. Uh, I want to thank everyone that's listening to this podcast uh, right now. I'm looking forward to doing more. Be sure to check out D. Check him out on his podcast and some of the reviews that he has going on right now with the Rapture. I'm um, looking forward to doing more of these soon. I think there's a there's a couple more, more uh, topics and issues that I'll probably want to touch on a little bit later on in the week. But just again, I thank you guys for uh, following me, following the show. Definitely like, share, follow. Could you be more specific? I'm your host, Jonathan Steele. I'm looking forward to doing more of these again in the future, and you guys have a good one.